Split decision MMA UK here after the second Manchester Fighting Championships in Earlham. We're here with Carl Prince, Mr. MC himself. Um, great night of fights, Carl. Um, new champion, first pro fight. A lot of new things for the promotion to take on. You know, how are you feeling about it all after it? You see, you grab me like 10 minutes after the event and ask me how I'm feeling after it. You bring me, bring me tomorrow. No, but it's the culmination of a lot of effort from myself and Aaron to get to this point. And it's great that, that James Adamson, one of our own, has, has got the, the, the first ever title we knocked out, the, the featherweight title. He couldn't go to a more worthy champion. If you knew James like I did and you knew the talent that he's got, hopefully this will really push him on to bigger and better things. You know, uh, he's, a, he's a nightmare in the gym. You know, he's a, he's a real nightmare in the gym. And he's a person that no one likes to train with because he's horrible, he's rough, he's rugged. And, and at the same time, he's, like, he's, he's the same person no one wants to go on a night out with because he's the same person. So, uh, I've got a lot of respect for James. I hope he pushes on from this. I want him to see him turn pro in the next 12 months. He's got, honestly, he's, it, the level of his talent is it, unparalleled. You know, you saw Jack McGann tonight. And yeah. again, he's another kid. He's 19 years old. He had his first fight when he was 14. He's fought twice in two weeks against, you know, Everybody thinks, oh, he's fought some guys who have, they've got experience. Steve Webster's had 60 boxing bouts, 60 boxing bouts. He's got a traditional martial arts background. And he saw tonight, he tried to get him in some, some crazy Japanese jiu-jitsu um, moves. And I think at times he threatened Jack. And, and Jack, Jack's gone and hurt his hand, so maybe that'll leave him out for, for the rest of the year. And that's a shame, really, for us, because you know, his next fight is 5-0. and And you see guys in the ultimate fighter. And three and them with less talent than him. So I think there's real big things that I expect to do. Him. And the same goes to James Adamson. Uh, hopefully he'll depend, defend his fight against another kid who fought tonight, James Cox uh, from Wrexham, the Inspire Gym. That's a fight I'm looking to put together on the next show. I think it's a culmination of two good talents and, and it, it really made for a good fight. Again, could tonight have been better? Definitely. We had a lot of late pullouts, and, and in turn, we've had to pull in a lot of people who've really helped us out and, and helped keep the card together. But we know it could have been a, a better night of fights, but we, we've, we've led for some good entertainment and, again, some, some decent bouts within there. And like you said about um, Jack McGann, you know, his development's coming on. Um, how good is it that he signed the deal with ECC, you know, so he's going to keep getting those fights? Yeah, I've got a lot of respect for Lee and, and Rob. See, the fingers of ECC, they spoke to Matt McGann and they promised him great fights. Uh, the Jack McGann fight was offered to a lot of what you put quote unquote local big names and they all said no. So he ended up fighting Paul Haynes. Paul Haynes is a, a professional boxer. You know, I, I'm sure he came under, into the cage under a different name, etc. But he's a professional and he's a good one at that. Um, and, and he demolished him early so again are we get, is it going to be easier getting fights no way we, you know there's, there's not there's no one out there that's going to that's going to fight him easily and i'm not going to name names but there's a lot of people who turn that fight down against jack mcgann and, and hopefully ecc can get him the fights that we want them to get because we see big things in store of him you know the america or wherever he could go next because he's four and oh and that's huge and at 19 years old it is 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 talent he can just go on and on and um, like you said, James Cox was a standout tonight, you know, possible James Adamson. Who else um, stuck out for you tonight? If you can, I know we're putting you on the spot to oh, remember no, names. I, I, I love telling you people who've done well. You know? I, I'd love someone to tell me that I've done well. But uh, Val Yandis, the, uh, the, the flyweight, you know, he fought a good kid tonight, a good kid. And, and he dominated him for three rounds. And that's no disrespect to, to Matt Thorpe and the guys at 12 gauge, because that, that guy came to one. McClellan came to win tonight. And, and he really gave it all in the three rounds. There's a lot of scrambles, a lot of scrambling, you know. It's a bit of a cliche saying, oh, the flyweights, there's so much action, there's so much action. But there was a lot of action in that fight. And it was a, it was a closely matched fight. But Valiandis just, I don't know, I, I just think he's, he's got it. You know, when someone, you see someone, they've got it, I think that... That he, that he might very well have it. And it's good that they've made the debuts on our fights because hopefully in two years' time we'll be talking about him and say, hey, guess what, he, he started on our show. So I wish him all the best in the future. I hope to see everybody from Inspire me. I've got a lot of respect for an hour, Abby. I, I train with him all the time. I want to say all the time, once a week, but I train with him regularly and, 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 and he's, a, he's a great guy. And, and more so than that, he's a great fighter. So we want to be associated with great fighters and associated with great fights. So that's great for us. And um, Inspire, should I say, um, brought a, a lot of, lot of really got a lot of fans, should I say, a great following. It's amazing. Um, and what's that like for you as a promoter? Obviously, it's a good thing. But um, you know, if you had a fighter going down to Wales, you know, would you take that many? You know, because it is not the longest trip, but um, it, it, 
Do you, do you want me to sound like a big head here? Yeah, well, I think we would. I, I really think we would, you know. Um, myself and Aaron have put this together because we have a good core group of people and networking people that are behind us all the way. Like, for instance, Aaron went to Scotland, took 60 people uh, three weeks ago, went to London and took 40. You know, Wrexham for your first fight to bring 100 people is amazing, amazing. You know, uh, and, and, and that's respect to me. It shows that not only is he a good fighter, he's a good guy. And, and hopefully, can, as a promoter, you want to see bums on seats, but, but also you want to see good fights. And not only to provide bums on seats, but provide a good fight. And we can't ask for more than that. And I wish him all the best. And hopefully, the, the best will continue with us further down the line. So that'd be great for everybody. And what's it been like for you? The same for Aaron. You know, you, you've both had fights recently. You've won great win at FCC, Aaron on Cage Warriors. How's it been putting this show together while being in training camp? Has it been a lot of hard work, or did you wait until you'd fought to put it together? If I could, if I could, if I could summarise it in one word, it's been tough. Uh, and not only that, like two weeks after my fight, Aaron was fighting, so my focus was on him, and and we was really worried about the tickets because we know that we put on a good show. We know that with the production to be great, uh, but we were worried about the ticket sales. And, and fortunately, everything fell into place, but it's not that we were kind of haphazardly doing it. We, we had a program in place, but oh, we're going to be even better and better. Again, it's only our second show, and we've had a lot of obstacles along the way. Obviously, Aaron getting that great win, and, my, and myself uh, pulling out a victory has been a, a rolling stone that's continued gathering moss. And I think SBG and Daywalkers combined were like 15 and oh, in, in recent competitions, so we must be doing something right. And, and respect to, to Carl Tanswell, obviously he's the, the Ayatollah that all comes from, and it filters down through myself and Aaron and on, on to, into Daywalkers and, and through himself to Matt Inwin and everybody else at SBG and, um, and the guys at MMA Academy. We really respect everybody we work with and we appreciate all their efforts. And we would be nothing without the, uh, the help of 12 gauge. Chester Submission Wrestling, Inspire, you know, all these gyms that have come together and, and sold tickets, not only sold tickets, put on good fights and brought fighters that are ready. You know, everybody, everybody wants to be a fighter. Everybody says I'm a fighter. But two weeks before the fight, all of a sudden there's a fight and they're not a fighter anymore. And, and, and I, I, ne never have 12 gays pulled out on us ever and never have Chester Submission Wrestling. And, and that's respect to them because we want to make good fights. And the, the difficulty that we have, and speaking to Adam Tay and people like that, the difficulty they have is you make a great card. And two weeks before the fight, it changes. And, and it, is, it is frustrating because we want, we want every fight to go three rounds. And if it doesn't go three rounds, we want to have a technical submission or a good stoppage. And, and, and we employ judges to, to guarantee that, that everybody gets the right decision. So it is a little bit disappointing, but by, on the flip side, we know that we've, we've pulled 17 people who deserved the wins tonight, and, and hats off to them, respect to them, and obviously respect to the 70 people who are getting in there, because there's been other people that have come before that didn't get in there, so it, it's been great. It's been, it's been a great journey. Do you know, this year, 2013, it's been our best year. I'm speaking for myself, Aaron. Uh, Matt Inman, everybody at SPG and everybody at Daywalkers, because you know we're, we're on a tear and, and Alex Minow is going to continue it in two weeks, I have no doubt about that and hopefully if we get to uh, showcase our skills before the years out we'll continue with that too. So. And what's it been like training with um, Alex? I know you, you said yesterday morning before the weigh-ins you were there like seven o'clock in the morning was it sparring with him? Yeah. Does he, who gets the upper hand in that one, you or him? Um, He's got a bit of weight on me on the, on the flip side. No, no, it's not, it's not a spar between him and I. We're preparing him for his fight. Right. Uh, and and we're, we're trying to get him in a position where he's comfortable and competent in every facet of his game. And his game's evolved so much. You know, I, we all really care about Alex. He's, he's that lovable rogue that everybody wants on their team. And, and you all know from your little brief interlays with him that he's, he's a good guy and inherently he's a good guy but more so than that he's a fighter and they know I, I can only speak for myself but he's the only guy I, I know that he doesn't care if he wins or loses he just wants a good fight and that's why he's taking the fight against Lee Chadwick who's a ranked fighter and a good fighter and um, I, I really believe that he's got the skill set in place to really shock him and move on to good things because he's on the tear this year he's had a lot more fights he's been more active and I can't I can't really put into words the effort that he's putting in because he's, he's laying it all on the line and, and I respect him for that and I know that he's going to really showcase what he's worth.
And will you be in his corner on the night? Oh, no, no, no. The SBG have got a, a good team, you know, together. John Bond is a fantastic strength and conditioning coach. Carl Tanswell, he's like, they're probably the best around. And then you've got Matt Emman in, in, in terms of support for the, for the fighters and, and then his knowledge and know-how. You know, I, I'm, I'm a minion compared to them. I hope I aspire to 1B to be as good as them in the corner. But in, in the meantime, I'm just happy to be helping. If it's a punching bag for Alex in his Friday middles, and as much as I resent saying it, I'm happy with that. And um, last one to end, you know, I know you want to go and celebrate the success of tonight. And like you said, the year so far has been great. But everyone tonight's had, had really good beards. You've got a nice little ginger beard rocking there. Do you think yours is the best your best on the night or do you, you know, see a better one? As a, as a journalist, is that like an oxymoron? Like a good ginger beard? Is, does such a thing exist? But if, I don't if even such know. a thing existed, I might have donned it. But mine has been, has been trimmed in, in recent times. Actually, as a result of what Alex Bernal does to you in, in full mount, he just pulls your beard and it's, it's a bad time for me. You've never uh, really felt such pain. But, but there you go. I think it's the year of the beard, isn't it? You know, you see uh, Martin Stapleton was here tonight. I appreciate him coming down and, and, and people like that. And ev everybody's rocking the beard. It's a bit of a... Again, if it works for us, it works for us. It's, uh, jo Josh Jarvis came up with a great line in training the other day. Our beards met. And he said, it's like Avatar. And I said, does this mean that one of us are pregnant? And, and who knows, it could be a fantastic year for everybody. And I, I'm going to say, good ginger beer is, Manu, beer, beard is Manu saying, you know, it's not journalism, but we go with it, don't we? I appreciate it. And again, I want to thank Split, Split Decision and everybody that came out to support us tonight for a fantastic night. I know that March the 1st, uh, MCRFC 3 is going to be even bigger and better. We're going to have lots of title fights. We're going to look for the welterweight title on the line, Johnny Mann. Uh, we're going to get the, see the return of Luke Taylor. Again, Nat Taylor making his debut. James Addison defending his title. Uh, and then hopefully the return of like Mark Jones, who's a massive, massive prospect uh, in the bantamweight division. who fought Brian Crichton, who's highly ranked now. Obviously, he's, he's on the tail with Cage Warriors and, and give him a very tough fight. So uh, it's exciting times. Daywalkers have got a fantastic team. SBG's got a fantastic team. And, and I'm flattered to be associated with it. So thanks for sp Split Decision for everybody coming down. I appreciate you all, so thank you. And thanks for having us. It's always great. Right. Cheers, Scott.